Well, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining me today to talk about John McKibben in the McKibben Legacy Classic Golf Tournament. I think we want to first understand who has known John the longest here at this table. It's like a game show. Who is the winner? Uh, me, 2004. I met him when I was an executive at Nautilus and uh, was introduced to him then. Me, 2005, I was a brand new congressional staffer, scared to death because he wanted a meeting with the congressman and the congressman was not available, so he got stuck with me. <laughs> and I, it's after I became CEO of Columbia Credit Union, so it's gotta be somewhere around 2012, 2013. Hmm, John? Well, if you go back to the previous century. And we do. <laughs> um, so I met John in either 79 or 80. Um, that'd be 1979 or 1980. <laughs> um, when John was on the county uh, commission. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, at the time, I was on the fair board. And there was always some back and forth between the commission and the fair board. So. I bet. Uh, yeah, but that's, so I go back quite a ways. So, you have the longest history with John. Yep. How did you first meet him? Or your most impressionable moment? Yeah, so right at the beginning, uh, John had contacted me because I was on the board and wanted to have lunch and talk about a project that was underway at the fairground. So we met at um, the Inn at the Key restaurant. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. uh, like everyone did back in the day. Back in the day. And. Uh, I, I would say from that meeting, there was never a time that I saw John where he didn't greet me with a big smile. And I mean, he just, we were in the same club as it were after that time. Yeah. So, like you were old And that's friends. how he treated everybody. Or, well, everybody that I'm familiar with. Well, he used to call me kid, and I didn't really like that. <laughs> but now I'm in my late 50s, and that kid sounds pretty that good. <laughs> When I first met John, um, I didn't know about all his history. I didn't know he'd been a state legislator. I didn't know he'd been a school teacher. All I knew was that he had run for Congress and he had a lot of great ideas and he scared me a little bit because, um, because of the job for the congressman I had. And so I did not take, uh, I was slow to understand John's authenticity, right? Because he was so gregarious and he was, so um, animated, and I did, almost didn't trust that, like with politicians. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> and I realized, um, it probably took me about a year until I realized, oh my gosh, when John has a suggestion and he calls me kid, that's my code for listen up, that he's trying to help me stay out of trouble. <laughs> and um, ever since then, he'd been like a big brother to me. Yeah. Now, you're on what's your most favorite moment. Coffee shops. John introduced me to every coffee shop in the greater Vancouver area uh, and it never went for uh, 30 minutes or 60 minutes. It was always a two hour or longer uh, brainstorm session and always came out with a lot of great ideas that we could we could activate and move forward with. John, John was an idea guy um, and he also had that passion and energy. He wanted to push things forward and really make a better community. And uh, we used to joke that uh, his favorite initials were GSHH, which is good stuff happening here. Although sometimes the stuff was replaced with another word, but, uh, <laughs> but, but, but we, we had a blast. And, and once I got to know Nancy, I fully understood John uh, because Nancy is a spark plug and we're really fortunate to have her. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I didn't meet John until uh, Denny Clark County had an opening for the president. And so I was on the board when we made the offer to John and accepted. Uh, but what I remember about John is this his love for the community, the involvement, his passion for what he did. He always had, was happy to have a smile on his face. He never knew if he had a bad day. But he was just always very nice. And he liked to joke around, so that's fun. Yep. Steve, I think your comment about his passion for the community, um, I mean, we've had a lot of cheerleaders over the years in terms of the community, but John's was intense. I mean, he was, <laughs> he had an, a vision for what the community could be, and he had ideas about how to get there, and I mean, he was like a dog with a bone, he just never let go of them. Yeah. <laughs> Until they happened. 
Mm -hmm. And I think you can draw that all the way back to when he first moved up here, right? I wasn't around at the time, but um, you know, he comes in as a school teacher mm -hmm. and it doesn't take him very long until he is all involved in local politics and county politics, state politics. I mean, it just, if you look at his trajectory from arriving in town, he was somebody who was gonna have an impact on this community. John once described uh, his political thinking as needing to tie a string around your proponents and your opponents <laughs> and pull gently. Uh, and it's an art to, to manage the middle. Uh, it, it's something we've completely lost touch with uh, in, in federal politics and to some degree state politics, but we, we have to compromise. And John always understood that there was some give and take and we would need to meet in the middle. Uh, I will remember that string analogy that he shared over and over uh, for the rest of my life. It's been very helpful. It's effective. Right, and he ran. He led Identity Clark County. He led the chamber. We've all had opportunities to work within those organizations. We know how hard it is. Mm -hmm. He helped establish leadership Clark County. Um, the CDM caregiving services was one of his favorite charities in his last days. Uh, he had a give back spirit, uh, and probably to the detriment of Nancy, he 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 would give even when he didn't check in with her. Uh, but that he just had that zest about I'm going to give back and. I think that's what makes the McKibben Classic so special is people are leaning into this effort uh, and giving back in ways without even really a lot of pressure or nudging. It, we're just doing it because it's the right thing to do and that's the spirit of John McKibben. Mm -hmm. And the legacy, I mean, if what would John think of the waterfront, the oh. Vancouver waterfront development, uh, right? If, if, if he were with us. But the truth is his legacy is a big part of that waterfront. It's the hard work that people did 20, 25 years ago when nobody wanted to worry about cleaning up Boise Cascade or getting the, this or that. John was involved in all of that from the get-go. Yeah. I was thinking uh, about all of the things that John had his uh, fingerprints on, uh, not the least of which is uh, WSU Vancouver. Mm -hmm. He was at the point of the spear making sure that that branch campus, at the time, branch campus, uh, was located in Vancouver and, and to the point where I'm pretty sure he was doing real estate tours <laughs> right, to figure out where it, where it ought to be. Uh, look at the impact the university has had on uh, Southwest Washington and the greater uh, Vancouver Portland region. Uh, and John was a big part of making that happen. I agree. When we look back to when John interviewed, and I was on the board of directors at ICC with you mm -hmm. at, at that time, uh, John came in and he had three goals. Uh, one of them was he wanted Block 10 built. Uh, one was he wanted the High Fry Bridge funded. And one was he wanted an aeronautic, aeronautic school uh, in, the, in the area. Uh, we're not moving forward on the aeronautic school, but the other two, uh, Block 10's done. Uh, amazing uh, project to see that filled and then I-5 Bridge, uh, it was his courageous work in early, early 16 is the reason we have funding for the bridge today and uh, give him all the credit, he deserves it. Yeah. Absolutely. Personality wise, I, I think there's a lot to be said for the idea of making everybody your friend even when they're not your friend. <laughs> there's a saying I used to hear once in a while, I'd say, well my friend. Yeah. And that always would tell me that maybe that person wasn't yeah. actually his friend yet. <laughs> but I never did that to he's me. He's pulling him in. <laughs> yeah, <there> he <laughs> but you know, that civility and um, yeah. that authenticity of, of really knowing that when you left a meeting with John, you might not have remembered everything that got said mm -hmm. or what you agreed to, for God's sake. But, <laughs> but you felt pretty good. <laughs> he just made everybody feel really good. And I just don't know if that's as a appreciated or um, revered in the public sector than it should be. Mm -hmm. I think one of, the, one of the things that I remember most about John is he was truly one of the folks in town that uh, taught me, you have to know what's going on all over town, all over the county, not just this little sliver that I'm uh, passionate about this week, right? When we would sit down, he, he would talk subject matter, subject matter, subject matter. Yeah, just to keep up with them when we met, I'd have to be <laughs> up to date, <laughs> right, on all of that. Uh, and I mean, that's personally served me very well, but it's one of the reasons that his legacy is so strong in this community, 
he made it his business to know what was going on and if he disagreed with the direction, it didn't matter who you were or what you were working on, he would give you a call and let you know. I don't know how he ever had the time to rebuild a World War II airplane with everything he had going on in his life. Yeah. Yeah. Because I know he did a lot of that himself. Very proud father, yeah. two, two beautiful daughters, and then grandpa, uh, yeah. man, he relished that role. Yeah. And, um, I just remember hearing him talk so fondly about his kids and his grandkids. It was really special. Yeah, very much a family man. Yep. Boy, he'd be embarrassed if he was listening to us now, <laughs> or not. No, <laughs> he'd no, say, he, "What about this time?" Yeah, guys? I was gonna say, yeah. "No, remember this one too." <laughs> yeah. yeah, and you know, we look back at the, uh, the, the the unfortunate tragedy, but even in that tragedy, John was performing a service. Yeah. No one yeah. asked him. I mean, he did the, he wasn't paid. He was doing this. He didn't even know the, the, the widow. He was doing this all out of the kindness of his heart. Mm -hmm. That's the spirit of John. And I, I will never forget that. That was really special. And by the way, thanks for the flowers. Uh, I remember that moment where you brought flowers in uh, to the ICC mm -hmm. office that day. And it was really special. It was a hard day. Yeah, yeah it was. Yeah. yeah. I think I learned over a phone call. Mm -hmm. Well, I do so, know how blessed we are. I mean, really privileged and fortunate to have, have known some of the individuals in this community, the Val and the Dan Ogdens and the John McKibbins and the Ed Lynches. And it just, uh, Vancouver would not be what it is today without them. And um, I'm reminded to be very grateful for each day I'm given, knowing that um, John's days, uh, oh man, so much more he would have been doing mm -hmm. if his life had not, um, been cut short that way mm -hmm. um, and when we do open a new bridge we will only. we will we will <laughs> um, I think we need to make sure that we have a, a John McKibben fan club there yeah uh, and yep. representing him you know I think it's uh, important to remember too it you know John was a teacher he was a, a commissioner a state legislator he was a property manager family man Repair man. <laughs> oh my God, that's right. On his properties, he did all his own repairs. Yep. Um, like MacGyver. <laughs> but he also took positions at our organizations mm -hmm. at crucial times. Yeah. The chamber had lost an exec under not so fortunate circumstances, mm -hmm. and John stepped in, and I know they paid him a fraction of uh, what he was worth. Um, but it, I think, made it possible for the chamber to weather that storm and be here today as strong mm -hmm. as we are. Mm -hmm. And I know with ICC it was a very similar situation. Yeah, it, it was. And he came in with, a, with big ideas and, and presented them to every one of the board members, just picked up the phone and called all the board members. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and we didn't all agree with his exact plans. But the fact that the guy had so much energy and desire to make the community better and had solid ideas with which to work, uh, we, we filtered a few of those, but by the end of the day, he was right two-thirds of the time. Mm -hmm. It was incredible. Bold and audacious. Yeah. I always yeah. think that about some of his great plans. But not rude. Not rude no. about it or not uh, abrupt or brusque. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he, right. he was a gentleman at all times. You mentioned earlier his his ability to make everybody uh, kind of friends. If you didn't know, you wouldn't know whether John was a conservative Democrat or a progressive Republican. He was right in the middle <laughs> and worked through those uh, those those situations. He realized we all had to work together. Yeah. We used to call that being a statesman. Yeah. Yeah. Because we, we still do. Yeah. Well, just so few of them to <laughs> refer to. Today. Sorry. Yeah. Well, we appreciate the opportunity, and we're excited about the golf tournament. And I don't know about you guys, but this golf tournament has become the thing. I mean, years ago, when all the work was going into this after John's death, mm -hmm. and people who believed in that project right. and stuck with it, and Nancy's commitment to it, I just am excited to see that it just has bloomed into its own, it's the IT event. Well, it's the brainchild of James O'Neill, mm -hmm. who now fortunately works here at the credit union, so he spearheads it for us. and. Uh, Last year's event was very impressive. I think we got a lot of good feedback from the players. 
uh, from those that attended and participated, uh, it was well run and organized. So this year we're looking for the same. Um, John, you're going to be there. I'll be there. Yeah. Yep. And uh, yep. Ron, I don't know yep. if you're Are golf you playing golf? Not. I'm golfing. Okay. <laughs> I, I'm no one's not. ever accused me of being a golfer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty sure my team has fired me from golfing, but I will definitely be there. I, no, no doubt. Well, I'll be there to support all of you. I'm not golfing, but yeah. I'm well, planning on being there for the event. And thanks to Columbia Credit Union for your leadership, uh, there are a lot of opportunities for you to sponsor things and get behind things. And you don't just say, here's a sponsorship check or whatever, I, I, you go out there, your whole team is out there. Yes. It's really cool to see the Columbia Credit Union really embracing this, uh, the top to bottom. It's, it's a great awesome. cause and we're proud to do it. Yep. So. Bravo. We all appreciate it. Thank you.